When people talk about some of the largest and most powerful battleships ever created, ships like Yamato and Iowa are always the first to come up. As the conversation goes further, unfinished and sometimes impractical designs like the A-150, Montana, H-Class battleships, and later proposals of the Lion-Class battleships always follow. All of these have something in common, they're from the World War II era. However, there's a design from the World War I era that's even further over the top. The Maxim battleships, or as they're otherwise known, the Tillman battleships. To start from the beginning, it's important to look at Senator Tillman for context, the man who proposed these ships in the first place, and the situation of the dreadnought arms race at the time. Benjamin Tillman was born in 1847, and eventually became the Senator of South Carolina in 1895. Discussing his politics is really outside the scope of a video about ship designs, but to put it simply, He's about as over the top and absurd as the ship designs he caused the creation of, even having gotten into a fistfight with Senator John McLaurin on the Senate floor in 1902. Between his vehement racism and inflammatory policies, it's a bit of a shame that Senator Tillman's name is attached to these battleship designs, indirectly keeping a legacy that should have died out long ago alive today. Anyways, the creation of HMS Dreadnought began an arms race with every country that had the industrial capacity to do so, including America, of course. With each new Dreadnought class, the Navy was creating larger and more powerful vessels, more or larger cannons, more armor, more weight, and a higher cost. With the recent creation of the Nevada class, yet again a larger and more expensive battleship than anything before it, Senator Tillman of the Senate Naval Affairs Committee requested a design study into what he called the Maximum Battleships in 1912. These would be the largest battleships that could possibly be created while still being able to move through the Panama Canal therefore being the most powerful battleships that America could build without removing their strategic capability to move between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans quickly. It's not quite known why Tillman proposed this study, though there are two popular theories. The first is that this design would reach the logical end of America's dreadnought construction programs, the gradual mounting of making ships larger and costlier, to see just how severe the situation could become. The second theory is that the American Dreadnought designs would get larger and larger until reaching this point eventually, so they might as well build these designs now instead of making smaller and weaker ships until they got to this point. I would like to propose my own theory, however. Since every country was creating larger and more imposing Dreadnoughts by the generation, it could be that the Maxim battleships would be a jump in capability so overwhelming that other countries would struggle to catch up. By creating a battleship far larger than anything before it, America could effectively end parts of the arms race by building a ship so overwhelmingly powerful and expensive that many countries wouldn't even dare try to match it, knocking countries with weaker industries and less resources out of the dreadnought arms race and leaving America as the de facto winner. This would also save money and effort in the long term, as there would be less need to construct larger and more expensive ships each year, simply maxing out at the maximum battleship designs. Regardless of the reason for conducting it, the first study didn't really go anywhere, effectively creating a scaled-up version of the 27,500-ton Nevada class with a displacement of 38,000 tons. The selected design for the next American battleship was the 31,500-ton design which became the Pennsylvania class, which while larger than the previous Nevada class, was still far smaller than the new design. In 1916, Senator Tillman, now chairman of the Senate's Naval Committee, yet again requested another study into the maximum battleship concept, New battleship designs were still getting progressively larger, so the previous ideas about going to much larger designs remained relevant. This time, it resulted in a few different designs. The Tillman 1, Tillman 2, Tillman 3, and then three variants of the Tillman 4 design. It's also important to note that the Navy did not actually want to build any of these ships. They were made simply to appease Senator Tillman with no intent to actually construct them, similar to some of the later H-class battleship designs which were too impractical to actually be considered. So, now that the context of the man and the situation are covered, it's time to get into the designs themselves. Keep in mind as these are covered that these are only the projected stats from the blueprints, and the actual final product may have come out differently from the original design spec, so take all of these numbers with a grain of salt. All of the Maxim battleship designs were designed to fill out the length and width of the Panama Canal locks, with each ship having the exact same length, beam, and drought. The designs all had 975 feet, or 297.2 meters of length at the waterline, or 998 feet, or 304.3 meters of length overall, to match the Panama Canal's 1,000 feet, or 304.8 meters of length, and 108 feet, or 32.9 meters of width, to match the 110 feet, or 33.5 meters of width of the canal. This meant that it would almost completely fill the locks of the Panama Canal, so they really were meant to be the largest possible designs that could be considered. 
The first design, the Tillman 1, was designed at a displacement of 70,000 tons, an already absurd size, though comparatively smaller than some of the following ships. It had a projected max speed of 26.5 knots, which translates to 30 miles or 49 kilometers per hour, which was actually very fast for a battleship at the time. The primary armament would consist of 12 16-inch 406mm cannons placed into four three-gun turrets. An impressive armament, but again, dwarfed by the grandiosity of some of the later designs. The belt armor maxed out at 18 inches, or 457 millimeters, which is thicker than the belt of Yamato was. Out of all the designs, the Tillman 1 seems to be the tamest. It's still absurdly overbuilt, and had the ship actually been constructed, it would have dwarfed even most World War II battleships, but it's still pretty vanilla compared to what's coming. The next design, the Tillman 2, is similar in some ways. It had the same 70,000 ton displacement and top speed, but the armor is significantly weaker, only coming to a maximum of 13 inches or 330 millimeters. As a trade-off, the number of main guns was doubled, up to 24 16-inch 406 millimeter cannons. The number of turrets, however, was not doubled. The Tillman II was designed to use four six-cannon turrets. That's right, six main guns per turret. The highest number of battleship caliber weapons put into a single turret has been four 15-inch 381mm cannons and quad turrets, such as those on Great Britain's King George V class and France's Richelieu class. Those already had teething issues due to the complexity of putting four cannons into a single turret, so putting six main cannons into a single turret would have been a technical nightmare. Tillman II is like foreshadowing for the designs that follow it up, though the next one in line was a bit less absurd in this case. The Tillman III was designed with a lower displacement of 63,500 tons and a hefty increase to engine power, combining the lowered armor of the Tillman II and the 12 cannon 4 turret layout of the Tillman I. It had a projected max speed of 30 knots, translating roughly to 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. This design was actually a fast battleship, and it could be looked at as being superficially similar to the Montana class in size and turret layout, though it's quite different due to the time it was designed. It was faster than many World War I battle cruisers with significantly more firepower and armor, not quite beating all of them in mobility, but even then it would have been the fastest ship for its armament and armor on the planet. While this covers the Tillman 1, 2, and 3, there are actually three more designs that fall under the Tillman 4 designation. Tillman 4, Tillman 4-1, and Tillman 4-2. These all have the highest possible displacement at 80,000 tons and the same top speed of 25.2 knots which translates to a top speed of 29 miles per hour, or 47 kilometers per hour. Tillman 4 was like the most impressive aspect of the Tillman 1 and Tillman 2 designs combined. 24 16-inch 406mm cannons from the Tillman 2, plus the 18-inch 457mm of belt armor from the Tillman 1. Tillman 4-1 is the first ship to jump up in weapon caliber instead of just number of cannons. It was to carry 13 of the new 18-inch 457mm 50 caliber cannons split into five two-cannon turrets and a single three-cannon turret, with a layout similar to that of Hyuga. However, the cannons would have likely turned out to be the 18-inch 457mm 48 caliber cannon. The armor was lowered to 16 inches, or 406mm, to compensate for the increased weight of additional turrets and larger weaponry. The Tillman 4-2 design is quite similar to the Tillman 4-1 with the only difference being that the main guns were increased to 15 with the same 18-inch 457mm cannons in five turrets. The turret layout was changed too, becoming similar to that of the Brooklyn-class light cruiser, but reverse, with two turrets before the bridge and three behind it. Out of all these designs, the Tillman 4-2 was chosen by the Navy and presented to the Senate. Again, there was no intent to actually build such a large and impractical battleship, but if they had to, this would be the design chosen. However, these designs would quickly lose whatever traction they had. On July 3rd, 1918, Benjamin Tillman died from a cerebral hemorrhage. With him being the main proponent of these designs, the Maxim battleships died along with him. Then another nail was drove into the coffin of these designs with the Washington Naval Treaty. With the maximum displacement of battleships being limited to 35,000 tons and the maximum size of cannons being restricted to 16 inches or 406 millimeters, there was simply no way the maximum battleships could be constructed, finished, or maintained. While they had never truly been considered for being built in the first place, they were now an impossibility, something that could not be constructed without a major break of international treaties and having no reason to be constructed in the first place. So, 
that's the end of the story of the Maxim battleships, as far as history goes. However, it's interesting to think about them in the sense of, what if? If a single ship of the Tillman 4-2 class were to be constructed, practicality and treaties not being factored in, what would have happened to it? Well, a likely first answer is that it would have been moved to Pearl Harbor in 1940 when President Franklin D. Roosevelt moved the Pacific Fleet to Hawaii to pressure Japan. During the Pearl Harbor attack, a Maxim battleship would easily stand out among the entire American Navy, being a primary target for the Japanese striking force and likely sinking in the attack. While historically USS Arizona was the largest ship sunk in the Pearl Harbor attack, becoming a well-known martyr for the American fleet, in the alternative timeline being constructed here, it likely would have turned out to be the Maxim battleship in the same position. While it would presumably be more difficult to sink due to its sheer size, it would still be a priority target, and even a Maxim battleship would be unlikely to survive an aerial attack of that intensity due to just how much ordnance it would be hit by. But let's assume that it somehow survives. Whether the ship simply isn't there, or it weathers the attack, it would presumably be used actively in the Pacific theater. It would be America's single strongest surface asset for direct combat, and with threats like Japan's Yamato and Musashi, it seems natural that the Maxim battleship would be deployed in the Pacific. Of course, in the end, it would likely meet the same fate that Yamato and Musashi did. A battleship so large would inevitably be the target of Japanese air assaults, and regardless of how much additional anti-air weaponry were mounted on the ship in the standard American fashion, it would eventually come under much more fire than it could take. If the Maxim battleship did make it out of World War II, I don't see it serving late into the Cold War like the Iowa-class ships did due to how old its machinery would be, resulting in difficulty with maintenance and refits, along with the slow speed of the ship making it bad for modern combat. The most likely outcome is that it would become a museum ship a decade or two after the war, like the South Dakota-class ships USS Massachusetts and USS Alabama along with other older battleships. If a Maxim battleship were too difficult to maintain as a museum ship, it would go off to the scrapyard, meeting the same fate that so many other ships did. Another thing to consider is potential refits. Due to the sheer size of the Maxim battleships, it could potentially receive even more weaponry than ships like the South Dakota and Iowa classes had. The Tillman 4-2 had the same beam width as an Iowa, but is roughly 111 feet or 33.8 meters longer overall, possibly giving it more room to add additional turrets. It's hard to guess how many 40mm and 20mm cannons would be added, though based on the benchmark of more than an Iowa would carry along with the heightened threat of aircraft to such a large vessel, it could be assumed that by the end of the war a maximum battleship would carry over 140mm Bofors and at least half as many 20mm Orlikons. The dual 5-inch 127mm 38 caliber turrets are slightly easier to guess due to the more restricted placement. An Iowa had 5 dual turrets on each side with two mounted on the deck and the other three mounted on the upper deck above them. Again, assuming that a Maxim battleship would have more anti-air weaponry than a ship of the Iowa class, one possible layout seems to be adding a single pair of dual turrets to each side of the ship, three on the deck and then four on the upper deck, bringing the total to 14 dual purpose turrets with seven on each side of the ship. Alternatively, it could be given the five inch 127 mm 54 caliber cannons that were planned to be placed on the Montana class battleships. So, those are Tillman's Maxim battleships. Unique designs, impractical, but certainly interesting to think about. They're the brainchild of a single unhinged politician, amounting to little more than a showcase of just how far the American dreadnought designs of the time could have possibly been pushed. Nowadays, their legacy persists as one of the most over-the-top battleship designs ever dreamt up, and with good reason. To sum it all up, the only way to describe any of these monsters is as a maximum battleship. Thank you for watching.